Henry. We have our guest. I, I would say the greatest fullback of all time. I don't know if you would agree or not. I want to go down some stuff with him, but I'm just going to give his accolades. Uh, he is Lorenzo Neal, 16-year NFL fullback, uh, one of my former co-workers. Lo, Neal, how are you, sir? You're on with me and Henry. Henry, what's up, Zach? My brother from another mother. Zach, I was listening to the intro and just listening to the music. You still got that sexy voice, baby. You bringing sexy back. My boy, Zach, what's up, brother? <laughs> okay, I want to start with this. In a time where there's load management and all this stuff, I'm looking at your stats. Not that I haven't looked them up before. But we're talking 1994, 16 games played. 1995, 16 games played. 1996, 16 games played. 1997, I'll fast forward and go all the way to 2006, 16 games played. You you dropped just a smidge with San Diego in 2007 with 13 games played, but then 16 games played again to end your career with Baltimore. Uh, what are your thoughts on load management with you and probably the most hard position in all of sports being a fullback? with people doing load management and whatnot and you playing 16 games every year? Yeah, I think a lot of that, when you look at the game, how it's changed, Zachariah, and you, you know, I know you guys are watching it close and seeing how training camp, how players have digressed from the physical contact because of the contracts, because of the money that's out there, and coaches and, and owners don't want their product that's on the field, don't want these guys getting injured, but I think that, that 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 doesn't work. Why do you think so many watching week one, there's going to be three knees? Watching week two, because what happens is guys start holding back and coaches and players are not going double day. So when you're hitting out there, you know how it is, Zach. You're freaking someone hit you in the arm every day. Your arm starts to get callous. You start getting used to it and your body starts to strengthen up. When you're in camp and now you're only going one day, you're not doing double days. You're not going back to back. Sometimes it does. It that you have a, a you have a a different result that you were looking for, and I think that's why you're starting to see some of the coaches wanting to go a little more physical. You've got to get those guys to get caught up to speed. And L, if you don't do that, opening day guys try to turn it on, and it's nothing there, and they turn it on, and that's why you get guys running at a different speed. And sometimes you got a lot of injuries on those first couple of weeks. Now, Zoe, let me ask you this, bro. But first of all, you know, I understand you you you, you straight out from Fresno, roo, 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 my man. You know, no, baby. Hey, that's one of those things to where I think more so back in the day, because this is my question to you. With all the high technology pads and all the you know, the the shoes, all the athletic stuff that these guys have nowadays, we didn't have back in the day. And they stay constantly hurt. I think is I think is more so of just our mentality as professional players understanding that first of all it's a blessing to be out there, and second of all this is how you eat. So we didn't play about well I'm gonna have load management. Right. No. No question. You hit the nail right on the head when you're talking about that, Henry. Just the inability for guys now they don't know how it, what it is. It's different. We used to say difference between injury and hurt if you're you know what if you're injured you you know you get out but if you're hurt it's not necessary so a lot of guys we should say you can't make the club in the tub and a lot of guys now because of the salary cap and because of certain different things that go on the nuances of the game they know now that they have they have control my dad used to tell me all the son son it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun and now these players they're in a position that they have you know more of that because they can say, I'm hurt. Oh, I don't want to necessarily practice. And teams aren't asked to cut them because of the fact, you know, the, the way the contract is structured and how it reads. And also guys are able to get that load management. And I don't necessarily agree with it because when you're when you're out there and you're out there grinding, you're a grown man playing a kid's game, getting a king's ransom, you got to have yourself out there because the continuity, you watch how offenses, defenses usually start ahead and then offenses start to catch up because when you're just defense, you just see ball, get ball. And now when you're thinking about sometimes when guys are out there and they're on the same page, the playbooks get watered down. You can't do a throw a bunch out of guys. Guys, they used to throw the first in the week. You knew the whole offense or you were getting cut. And so when you're now, when you're on that load management, there's a lot of other things that water down the game and not just injuries, but also the lack of IQ for the game because some of these guys, they don't throw it all at them because you're on the, because you're on the load management. Henry Turner, Zachariah, Zach Town Sports, 1140, joined by the one, the only, Lorenzo Neal on Twitter at Lorenzo Neal. Lorenzo, uh, talking to Henry here, 
we were saying if the Niners, which I think is pretty indisputable in terms of their positional talent is one of the top five, if not number one in the NFL. And the big question mark is the quarterback position. If they were to hoist the Lombardi trophy, who do you think would be the quarterback there doing it? Do you think that it can be Brock Purdy? Do you think it would be Trey Lance? Hell, even Sam Donald? I look at this, and this is interesting and very fascinating because I'm telling you, the, thing's gonna, the thing that is tough, and Zach Ryan, and I know you guys understand, Henry, that how people are. We're just, we, we, we live in a society where it's right now. Instant gratification. I got to have it right now. When do we want it right now? Instant gratification. And things have changed, and you watch how fans, it's like, okay, we want Purdy, and Purdy, what he did, he's earned the, job, he's earned the starting quarterback job. We get that. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to be what people think. He's not going to start off, in my opinion, 7-0. and Even though you have a great team and good people around and we have some of the best receiving core in Iuk and, of course, Debo, the Sw- Army Switch Knife, and you have the running back and tight, arguably the best tight end or the second best tight end in the NFL. It's still going to be – it's still going to – you still have to go out and perform. And I'm not saying that Purdy's not going to perform, but it's hard to do what that young man did. It's almost a curse for Purdy because of how he started off and how he played during the time when he took over the him. So that's what's going to be tough. But to answer your question, at the end of the year, I think when you look at Purdy and what he's done and how he understands Kyle Shanahan's offense, where to go with the ball, where it's designed to go with the ball, it's a pretty simple offense. And that's why Kyle Shanahan's been waiting for a guy to just execute my offense because it's not rocket science. Because of the way that the read offense, the way it's set up, the way that, you know, it's that zone, he's going to go, you're going to get looks and what guys should come over. Purdy's following the script, and he's, I think that he's going to be the guy that, barring in injuries, that you got to give him a chance and you got to let him ride this thing out. Hey, Zo, talk about this. You know, I'm more of an analyst when we talk about, you know, sports. I'm not a big, you know, X is an O guy and a stat guy. At the end of the day, talk about, you know, First of all, we, we were talking about Purdy and running this football team. He's going to have to be a vocal guy out there on that field. And then while being the vocal guy, you have to be able to have the trust from the rest of your troops that they're buying into what you're barking. No no question. That, that, that's, you know, that's uh, profound. But they do, and I think if you look at last year, the way that this team was moving with Purdy and the way that he played, Let's look at the Dallas game, the playoff game. It goes to show you that those men got behind him because he won five or six games, whatever it may have been, during a regular season. But when the playoffs, that wasn't just a lights-out game for Purdy. He struggled at times. But the team said, don't make a lot of mistakes, and that's good enough. We can win football games. And that's what the 49ers, how they're built. So they, the, I think the buy-in is there. I think the biggest thing, you know, for this team, for me, is, after a year, you don't think a lot of people are in the lab saying, how are we going to figure this Purdy guy out? What are we going to do to slow him down? What is going to be the things that we're going to come at him? At times, he held the ball and took some unnecessarily hits. How are we going to pressure him and keep him in the lane? You know he's in the monks there amongst the trees. How do we make the pocket, put it in his lap? I think you're going to have to move him. I think this year Purdy's going to have to, believe it or not, guys, they're going to have to move that pocket because I think the teams are going to say, stay in your lane, keep him in the pocket, make him throw over the trees, make him throw over. I think you'll see a lot more balls batted down. And I think that that's why the run game has to continue to thrive because you've got to get this guy outside the pocket. You've got to continue to get guys moved and get them to play lower for he can get the ball out of his hand because I think teams are going to say, look, let's keep him inside this pocket and let's make him play full from a phone booth. And, you know, Zoe, and last but not least for me, you know, me and Zach, we were sitting up here and we were debating about, you know, when you're a rookie and you have a very good year and then you come out that second year and, you know, you think you all that. And I told him, I say, that could be a blessing and a curse to have a very good rookie year because that second year, you can't come with that exact same game. You have to bring something new to your game every year because they seen what you did your rookie year and they're going to, they, they watch film. They're going to combat that. So you have to have a yin to your yang. You just can't, you just can't come back with that regular, uh, regular old game. No, you're absolutely right. And, and, and guys, sometimes they digress when you get have that freshman year and you have that second sophomore, that sophomore itis or the second year hump. So you're going to be in a situation where this guy, you know that Purdy wants to be great. You know that it's not going to hit the lack of work ethic, that, that, he, that he has that. 
So he is going to push. And he understands that Trey Lance wants this job. He understands who's behind him. He understands what he had to go through to get his job and his opportunity. My dad always said a hungry dog hunts best. Purdy is hungry, and he's a guy that's not going to live off his lures. But I think that Shanahan, because he is a professor and because he's kind of that wizard S, he is going to make sure that he puts this young man in a position to be successful. The guy understands this offense. It's one, two, three, get the ball out of your hands. It's these, it's these zone reads, outside zone. Okay, boom. If I hold and the guys come off them, you watch them, how they come off the ball. Shanahan tells them, hey, you're going to go down and pass block for three yards. As long as you stay within that five-yard radius, make it look like runs, low hats. You come off the ball. Now the linebackers, they have to feel the hole because of your running game. So they have to step up. And that, that mid section of stepping up, now your safety has to come down and cover the tight end. Now you got some one-on-one coverage out there. That's why the offense flourishes in these deep come-overs and these, these routes that come over the drags because of the fact the way that they execute the offense. But, yes, he is going to have some things and some wrinkles in there that defenses are going to do and see can he adjust. So it's going to be a big year for Purdy. He's going to have to have that learning curve, like you said, and teams are going to figure him out. And now we get to see how he's going to evolve. I think he has what it takes. The guy is hungry. He works hard. So he has what it takes. But definitely his game is going to have to evolve. And I just don't want fans to have expectations that this guy's going to necessarily go up to a 7-0 start and play as lights out as he did uh, last year. Lorenzo Neal, check him out on Twitter, at Lorenzo Neal, good friend of mine, always good to me, even though one time he pretended like he was going to attack me and then he called me out for not (laughs) defending myself, uh, even though I thought I defended myself well. But uh, Lorenzo, when you get inducted to the Hall of Fame, I expect an invite. No question, brother. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. we got to do it again soon, guys. Cheers. There there you go, Lorenzo Neal. Uh, Coming up next, what I would argue is the greatest piece of audio you're going to hear in all of 2023. Wow. And I think it's what I, I'm, I'm hoping you and I are like-minded, Henry. I'll find out together. Okay. But this is how I, <laughs> I, I don't have any kids, but when I have kids, knock on wood, this is the way that I'm going to parent my kids. And that's the best way I can tease well, this upcoming well, segment. Well, I, I'm a 1972 dad, so, you know, I'm well, old I'm 83. School. I'm 83 born. So. Uh, no, no. I said I'm a 72 dad. No, I got you. I, I got raised you. mine like it's 1972. Well, okay, well, I'm assuming <laughs> that you're going to agree with me then. Henry Turner, Zachariah, 1140, Sacktown Sports.